Good evening, Forts County residents, and thank you for your patience. We're ready to start our webinar now. Um, tonight's uh, focus is on the proposed governing document amendments for the capital contribution fee. Um, again, thank you for your patience. We uh, have three members of our board of directors who are part of our task force for the capital contribution fee. They are Sally Frazier, Ken Spencer, and Roy Madsen. And so please uh, take it away, our presenters. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's webinar on the changes to our governing documents. My name is Sally Fraser, and I'm a member of the Board of Directors, as well as chair of the task force charged by the Board of Directors to accomplish the approval of a variety of changes to our governing documents. Other members of the task force include Roy Madsen and Ken Spencer, both board members and in the room tonight, as well as Nancy Mull, chair of the Finance Committee, Ray McCaskey, chair of the Facilities Committee, and John Butterworth, chair of the Communication Committee, as well as Drew Mulhair, general manager, and Sally Walls, assistant general manager. There has been a significant amount of information provided about the capital contribution fee and other necessary document changes in the talk of the colony, in which we had at least one article every month since September, on the website, including frequently asked questions, and what's happening in Ford's colony, a town hall that was taped and put on the web website, plus a redlined version of the changes to the bylaws and protective covenants also on the website. Tonight, we will just touch on the various changes and then open the floor to your questions. Please type your questions in at the chat box on the lower right, and Drew Mulhair will consolidate them for us to answer. We appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight. At any rate, by now, everyone should have received a ballot, either via email for those who provided an email address or a paper ballot for those who did not. If you have not been able to find a ballot on your email address, we ask that you look in spam, look at other email addresses that you might have used in the past and have given to uh, the Homeowners Association and maybe no longer using. But if you cannot find a ballot online, please call in to CSB, Community Services Building, talk to Sally Walls and she will arrange to get you a ballot. Okay, so you can now see the, um, the ballot as it uh, appears, it will appear if you um, get your email or you get the paper ballot. Um, we ask that you first agree to have Ken Spencer, the FCHOA secretary, act as your proxy. The first resolution then allows him to do that. The second resolution allows the Fords County Homeowners Association to carry forward the favorability in our operating budget from 2021 to 2022. This is the standard resolution which you see every year to allow the prior year's favorability to offset the next year's expenses. If this is not passed, there are IRS consequences and tax liabilities. The board, as in prior years, asks you to vote agreed on this resolution. Um, so the next uh, section on the ballot is for you to vote for three of the candidates. Um, th this should appear on the ballot that you have with the names of the five people running, and you're choosing three out of five for uh, a two-year term starting in 2022. Um, now, we decided what we'd do if anybody had any questions on the ballot on these sections that I have just discussed, being the resolution to carry forward, um, appointing Kentax as your proxy, or um, any problems with um, seeing who's running or anything like that. We'd ask that you send those questions in right now before we get into the changes to the governing documents while you're um, on this, while we're on this topic. I don't know that there should be any questions, but in case there are, please uh, type them into the chat uh, box on the lower right. Sally, I, I'll keep an eye out for that uh, if you want to continue to Just move on. Just keep going? Okay. Then I guess what I'll do now is I'd like to turn the meeting over to Roy Matson to address the capital contribution fee. Um, Following Roy will be Ken Spencer to talk about the other proposed changes to our governing documents. Note on the ballot that the first um, resolution after um, the ones I've spoken about refers to the capital contribution fee. That's what Roy is going to address. And then the next two are going to be the ones to which Ken Spencer is going to speak. At the end of that, we'll answer any questions you have on any topic. Thank you. The, the ballot is up, uh, Roy, for the approving the implementation 
of yes, the if you, can move, if you can move to the next one, uh, Drew, that would be great. Okay, just just kind of a an overview for both pieces, both the, the governing documents and the CCF. Why should we do this? Okay, I'm going to start with the most obvious answer. It's the right thing to do. Okay, because it really does two things for us. It enables us to have a second source of funds. Okay, that's the CCF that I'm going to talk about in a minute. And the other thing it does for us is that it ensures that our governing documents are current. I'm, there's been a lot of changes since 2013 since we last do this. And it's something that we need to do because it's one of the ways that we continue to be a premier community. Next slide, please. The CCF is this next uh, ballot item. It's actually the last ballot item on the ballot because it follows the changes in the documents because it's a specific change to one paragraph in the governing documents. Just a couple of things about what the CCF is. It's a fee that's equal to two quarters of the Ford's Colony yearly assessment. And it's assessed at the closing of the sale of a property improved or unimproved in Ford's Colony paid for by the purchaser of that home. Its sole purpose is to um, fund current and future approved prod capital projects. Now we're not talking about amenities here. And as a matter of fact, it is not to fund amenities. To give you a couple of examples about what we're talking about here is that this year we're doing a lot of upgrades to um, our, our IT systems. Can't you tell um, uh, that, that we probably need something here? Okay, that might be something that would be funded through the CCF. The pipes that everybody is, has come to know and love, that's another item that might be funded through the funding that we receive from the CCF. It's all part of the fact that we have a $40 million infrastructure here in Forge Colony that we meet, need to maintain. Capital funding repair and replacement accounts for approximately 20% of our annual expenditures. And we also are in an environment where those numbers are kind of changing. We've all seen inflation. Inflation affects those, those, uh, those items, et cetera. So it's great to have another source of funds. Other to increase quarterly assessment, Ford's Colony's ability to raise necessary funding is limited. We really don't have any other major source of funds. The CCF enables us to better manage our annual assessments. And last but not least, it's not we're we're not stepping out here in front of everybody else. Okay, a capital contribution fee is something that is very common in other large and small HOAs. If you look at the table at the very bottom of this, this slide, you'll see the comparison to the other large HOAs here in uh, uh, Williamsburg. Uh, the, the proposal that we have is going to be the lowest of any of those large HOAs. And I just might add, note the fact that our assessments are also the lowest of any of the large HOAs in uh, Ford's Colony. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Ken, and he'll spend a minute talking about the uh, uh, change in documents. Thank you while we shuffle around here. Uh, I'm Ken Spencer on the board, and I'm the board secretary, so I got chosen to do this part of the presentation. Uh, we have two other ballot items up there because we have two major governing documents that we are updating and require homeowners approval to amend uh, these documents and publish them. Uh, the first document is our bylaws. Uh, that is the document that governs how we run Ford's Colony HOA, how the board of directors works and everything else. Uh, there are a lot of changes in that document itself that were caused by changes at the state level when they rewrote their Homeowner, Homeowners Association Act, uh, Property Owners Association Act, and renumbered everything there. So a lot of our references in the bylaws are 
had to be changed just because what the state did at the state level. Uh, the other thing that happened is we had a lot of cleanup in that is bylaws that we had to fix uh, and go ahead with that. The other major document we have is our declarations. This is the document that we provide to all prospective buyers coming into the uh, Forge Colony HOA. Uh, this de defines our rules, regulations, and what we do. And it's a, a common document that is passed out to every prospective buyer. This also had a lot of references back to this, the state changes. And there were some other things in there uh, that had to do with the previous developer and some rights and privileges he'd had in our previous declarations that dated back to 2013 that needed to be changed because it had subsequently been changed by other agreements. So that's basically why we're trying to do that. Our uh, voting on this proposal is required so that we can institute these changes and we encourage everyone to get out and vote. Uh, we need at least 67% of the homeowners to vote in affirmative to make these changes. Now we'll take some questions. Sally? Mm -hmm. uh, Sally we're, 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 we're gonna answer some questions that came in earlier. We've decided we're all gonna try to slide in here because this is, uh, technology is not our friend tonight. So, um, it, the first, pardon? Uh, okay. Drew? We do have some questions that came in. You asked about uh, the, the the first part of the uh, uh, ballot. A couple questions related to that uh, regarding uh, why do we need a proxy? Why are we electing uh, the secretary to vote on our behalf? Uh, type of questions and uh, you know structurally why we're why we're doing that. Okay, it, this is just basic standard procedure. Every homeowners association does the same thing. It's an IRS requirement that if you have funds left over, that if you want to apply them to the, excuse me, to your next year's budget, you must have this um, voted on by the membership. We are doing, we've been doing this for however many years we've been uh, uh, here, and it's a, it's a standard procedure. There's nothing unusual or uh, one-time shot. This is going to appear on your ballot year after year after year. And it's always the secretary who handles, um, it, it, I mean, that's standard procedure to have the secretary be the, uh, your proxy for the, for the uh, homeowners. A second question uh, is, what procedures or mechanisms does the FCHOA use to identify and prioritize its capital projects and deferred uh, projects uh, year over year? And related to that, is how do we account for inflation in our reserve modeling? Okay, well, two ways. One is when a project is accomplished, it's added to the capital reserve model. It's put in there with a value of what it would cost to replace it. And it is um, put in with the number of years that we expect it to um, it exist before it needs to be repaired, replaced, maintenance done to it. Uh, we then spread that cost over the number of years that are there. So if we had something that was a million dollars and it's going to last 10 years, it would be $100,000 a year. Now, on top of that every year, we have an inflation factor. And the inflation factor, I believe, for roads is something like 4% and for everything else is 25 Am I right on that, Drew? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, for, so anything related to roads, it's there's a 4% inflation factor that's added on to the cost and anything that's related to pretty much anything else, unless we know something different, gets a 2.5% increase. Uh, and additionally, uh, the other part of that question, we asked our Frozen Property Management Committee to look at all of our assets every year and determine which assets need to be repaired and then they schedule those repairs for the next year, submit it into a budget, make a plan of what they're going to use. Um, we have the forecast model that says what might be repaired, but they look at it every year and, and only do the repairs that are absolutely necessary. And those are the repairs that get actually funded out of the model. And I'm going to add one other piece to this, okay, is that all those things that we do are designed to make sure that we have no surprises relative to our capital items. 
But every now and then we do have surprises. And one of those surprises was the pipes. And that's when we may have assumed that those pipes would last for 40 years and the reality, or 50 years, and the reality was is that we had failure significantly in a shorter time frame than those 50 years. In those cases, we didn't reserve necessarily enough. So that would end up creating an immediate capital need, which is back to one of the needs for this CCF that we're putting into place. Uh, I, I might want to add just one more thing. Maybe this is more than you want to know. But in addition, every five years, we have a group that comes in and checks out our capital model. Um, and that was done just, I think, last year again and resets it if necessary. We look to what the current costs are and do we need to reset the values that we have in for each item, each item, not just an overall um, inflationary percentage, but each item we get estimates of costs of what it would do to, to uh, replace it. Um, I want to give uh, kudos out to the to our management staff because the uh, reserve advisors whom we use so trust our model that instead of taking our data and putting it through their model, they use our um, data, our um, model, and verify that it's uh, appropriate. And um, it's quite a feather in our cap that that's the situation. So we know that we are very viable and are doing this properly. Thank you. Um this question has been is being asked in a few different ways, so I'm going to try to bring it together in, uh, in, in one question. Will the capital contribution fee uh, funds be used for the construction of new amenities? Uh, so I know in your presentation, uh, you have it that will be designated for the capital reserve fund. But the question is, you know, what about what about new amenities? There was a resolution passed by this board, okay, that the CCF will not be used for new amenities. Note, however, is that there is another funding process, okay, uh, for items to be approved by the board for new amenities. It's called the, uh, oh God, the capital, capital, investment uh, fund. capital investment fund. Too many CCFs and CFE, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. Um, and the intent there is to every year as part of the budgeting process, a small amount of funds is provided to that fund so that there is flexibility, okay, to meet uh, uh, FCHOA needs as it relates to uh, differing amenities. And can you just expand that, uh, Roy, to differentiate between what we consider amenities, uh, those type of capital improvements versus what we consider the capital uh, reserve for replacement. Uh, I can use I, I can use the slide as an example for that. Okay, is that the slide that we just recently uh, put in, which has actually met with a lot of favorable reviews, both by the residents as well as by folks like the realtors, et cetera. Okay, would be considered uh, an amenity. It would not be considered like uh, back to IT, considering where we are today, okay, is enhancing the IT process uh, and buying both new computers and new servers, okay, to help fund that infrastructure uh, here in Forge Colony. Another example is that there were just new partitions put in to the swim and tennis club, okay? That is also a capital improvement repair reparation, whatever you want to say relative to that. Those are items where the capital uh, the, the capital money that might be raised by the CCF would be spent, not on things like the slide. Okay, um, just looking over some questions here. Um, the, ar the article for the capital contribution fee states that Funds may be deposited into any reserve fund. Oh, why is that? Why is that so? Why is it stated that way? Uh, I I think I'd like to say it slightly differently. Basically, the Forge County Homeless Association has one reserve fund, and it's got about five different sections to it at this point. One is our 
a homeowners association capital reserve fund, which is the roads and the buildings and the uh, 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 what else have we got? Swales and and things like that. All all our capital items. So, the second part is we own Ford's Colony Drive, and we have a separate capital. Um, we're building capital for that. Uh, a capital reserve uh, for that fund. And that's a section of this. There's also um, the drainage uh, pipes that those funds are going, are in there, are being held in that reserve fund. And the same thing for our capital investment. Those funds are identified for the capital investment fund, are being held in the reserve fund. We have one reserve fund, but we differentiate how the monies are held, and they are held sometimes in separate accounts, but there is one fund. Okay, uh, another question is, am I correct that approval of the capital contribution fee will help keep our HOA fee lower than if it was not approved since the loss of the uh, capital contribution fee income will have to be funded uh, by regular assessments? That's correct. That's correct, is that having the additional funds, okay, for funding capital items or that 20% of our, of our budget that mm -hmm. we spend every year, is that absent having those funds and having the need for, for example, buying new computers, okay, the only other place yeah, we can fund that is through assessments. So yes, indeed, absent the CCF, is that the assessment amounts may be higher. Mm -hmm. Now, I would give you just one example. Um, just assume that uh, we pass it, and it is approximately $1,000 per property. And I'm going to use an easy number that divides the way I want it to. Say we sold 150 properties in the year. That would bring us in $150,000. We have approximately 3,000 um, 3, uh, uh, residences, uh, members, what are, property holders. That would be $50 per residence, less in fees that you would have to pay. The 3,000 divided into the 150,000. So it is a definite um, advantage, significant money that would be saved in, in uh, putting this in. Uh, so a couple different questions on the same theme. Uh, questioning uh, with, with, with one of our local communities charging as much as uh, a percentage of, of the sale of the home, another community charging a full annual assessment, another community charging two and a half times the annual assessment. Why are we setting our uh, capital contribution fee uh, at what, what's considered low at uh, one half of an annual assessment? Yeah, go with it. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that the uh, Ford's Colony proposed fee is low, okay? Um, uh, I think what, what the, 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 the folks that came up with this, the, the, the size of the fee and the thought process of the board, it, it kind of represents a good balance, okay, between what it might bring in, okay, as well as what its impact is. I mean, we also, it's not to say that we don't look how much, if you will, colonial heritage charges, because it's it's quite significant, okay, and it can have an impact. So there's a lot of items that needed to be balanced there to come up with the right amount. And, you know, to, to start this off, we think that's the right amount. Yeah, this is a... Uh, a a, a question of, regarding the pickleball court construction. Um, is that considered a capital improvement uh, or an amenity? Um, so that that specific to, uh, I, I think we'd have to break that down into what are we doing at the uh, pickleball courts? Uh, are we building new courts or are we, uh, uh, are we uh, repairing existing courts? Uh, it, 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 Drew, it's, it's exactly what the, what you're phrasing it, okay, is that indeed if we built new courts, oh, courts that would be considered uh, an expansion or a new amenity, okay, 
you know, in this next year, we will have to start looking at resurfacing or addressing older courts, okay, which is all part of the, the capital improvement model. So if it's a matter of rehabbing, and I'll use those terms, current courts, okay, that's something from the capital reserve and something that could, in fact, be funded by the uh, uh, capital, CCF. the CCF. Um, uh, if we were putting in new courts someplace, clearly that would be a new amenity. That would be something that would have to be funded by, if you will, the CIF, okay? Or frankly, it could be from a decision by the board, okay, unrelated to the, uh, uh, the CCF, okay? I'd like to add just one thing so that you don't think that it is the pivotal um, aspect of the courts that's causing the uh, repair and replacement that needs to be done in this next year or so. In fact, if those courts were still tennis courts, this would be undertaken. It's the base of the court that needs to be repaired and or replaced. Not, it doesn't matter whether it's used for tennis or pickleball. It may be slightly different things that are done, but basically it's it's needed to be done. So this question is uh, the capital contribution fee is a one-time fee assessed to the home purchasers. Uh, that's the question, is that correct? It is correct. Uh, and the question is, can you speak to why uh, some of the reasons you've heard that some homeowners may be opposed to the capital contribution fee? Yes, I suppose I can. You know, at the point in time you sell a house, and this is a concern some people have, at the point in time you sell a house, there's always negotiations. There's negotiations on whether you give them the dishwasher, not dishwasher, but the washing machine, the refrigerator, the drapes, the chandelier, and anything can be negotiable. <coughs> some people are overly concerned that this thousand dollars will be um, a negotiating point in, in the sale of their home. Now, I would also add, if you've got a market such as today's market, you could do about anything and still sell your house. If you have a buyer's market, th things are going. There will be more negotiations, um, but that's part of life. It's not because you have a CCF or you don't have a CCF. It has to do with the the market at the time you're selling. We do have a, a couple questions that are about the governing documents. Uh, I'll get to those in a little bit, but uh, but we wanted to focus uh, the, our at least our earlier questions to the uh, to the capital contribution fee. Uh, one is uh, that, as you we were saying earlier, the you know the article states that it is the purchaser's obligation to pay the capital contribution fee. How will the fee be collected, and is it subject to uh, seller purchaser negotiation? A little bit of a repeat of earlier. We've talked about the, uh, uh, the aspect of being part of the seller uh, buyer negotiation. Uh, it will be a fee that will be on the settlement sheet and will be collected by the settlement attorney during closing from a for property here in Forest Colony and then remitted to uh, on the purchaser side and then remitted to Forest Colony uh, HOA. HOA. Thank you. A uh, question is, if the capital contribution fee is approved by the residents, what approval process will need will be needed in the future uh, if uh, if we want to increase the rate? Uh, we'll have to go through the same uh, uh, process. The board will have to recommend an increase in the rates at that time. They will have to bring it forward to the residents and say, we, we are this as an amendment to our disclosure document and it will have to be voted on by all the residents, uh, just like we're doing this year. And get a two thirds approval. To get two thirds approval to implement the change. Although remember, we probably, we do have inflation built into this because for the most part, every year our budget goes up. So that half year's um, assessment will increase each year as our um, assessments go up. So there's some inflation factor built into it. This question is, can you please restate the estimated amount of revenue the capital contribution fee will generate annually based on our estimates? Um, probably the best way of putting this is, is that over the last 10 years, 
Okay, the average number of home sales here in Forge Colony have been, been about 150. 175. Okay, what? 175. 175. Excuse me, 175. Pardon me. Okay, this last, last year, sure, there's been been uh, more than 175. It's, it's it's well over 200, but this has been in some ways a lot of people making this here. So I think it's pretty fair to say that uh, the, the, the numbers will range somewhere between 150 to 200 home sales a year. And if you keep on using that same average, we're talking about 175,000 each year. Um, thank you. Uh, some of these are comments as opposed to questions. Uh, if, if a new amenity is approved by the board, uh, then how would it be paid for? It, would it be an increase in dues or uh, it, the question is, would, would we be using CCF funds, which I believe you've already said no, uh, but so let's just stay on the first part of it. How would we pay for uh, a new amenity in our budget? We, we have two ways of paying for amenities. Those of which are under $50,000 become part of our um, operating fund, our normal operating budget. Those that are more than $50,000 are going to be paid for the capital investment fund, the CIF, which we are now going to fund at 1% of our overall budget uh, per year. So it, approximately, let's just say this year, it should have been approximately 60,000. We were we made it only 50,000 because this, this was an unusual year uh, with, with uh, monetary problems. Um, so if it's under 50,000, it's the normal part of the budget and has been in, er in every amenity that we've done. It always starts through operating and then goes to capital. If it's over 50,000, it's gonna go through the capital investment fund, which we set up and it um, will be funded, we'll be able to have that as long as we've got the funds in, in the account. In other words, our, our account right now is rather small. We're just getting it started. So any major uh, project would have to wait for a couple of years. Or the other way that some of these projects go is that the people who want it um, give some sweat equity or some financial equity to help make the project work. For example, Pickleball paid for some, I believe the backboard and for some benches and for um, other things they wanted in it. And so did Bocce when Bocce was set up. So, um, Snazzy Tennis, the tennis one. Oh yeah, and, the sna and Snazzy Tennis, the, the uh, child's tennis uh, instructional group, they paid for the backboard um, on the, uh, in the tennis courts. So um, I guess I hope that answers the question. Well, just, just to clarify, uh, from all of those funds obviously come out of homeowner dues, the ones that the HOA has. Uh, so, again, I think you ans answered this slightly differently before, but maybe perhaps restate it in different words. Uh, if the housing markets uh, go up and down, how will the HOA regulate income from the capital contribution fee? How will it reduce or increase the amount? Uh, so I think you just have to re-explain how it's tied to those resales. Again, it's tied to the number of resales. Uh, we can't predict what those will be. Uh, we can just say from an average in the past, it's been about 175,000, uh, 175 retails per year over the last 10 years. Um, if there's less, we will collect less in these capital contribution fee because it's directly tied to the number of resales that happen during the year. I, I would add is, is that when the budget is being put together, okay, we can have a pretty good assessment of what the real estate market is like, okay? So that estimating that number to the extent that it may be drastically wrong, the risk of that is fairly low. And just to say, because this fee is not implemented at this time, it is not included in the 2022 budget that the, that the board of directors approved. Uh, good, Ken. That sets up the next question. This is from a new resident, and uh, the question is, what is the annual operating budget? What is, what is that uh, general amount? So it's approximately six million. Uh, what was it? Six million nine hundred thousand, I believe, this year. Um, we went up significantly from the prior year, uh, primarily due to uh, labor rate increases. 
but about six million nine, which includes capital reserve, includes our mortgage, and includes our operating budget. Thank you. I would also remind uh, uh, the questioner that we do have a, a one-page budget format that we mailed out in December. If uh, uh, if you if any of our listeners uh, do not have that one-page budget that was mailed out on December first, we'd be happy to. It's on our website, but we'd also be happy to send you a copy if you just send us an email asking for it. Um, this is more of a, 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 a general document question. It, it came in from email. Um, uh, it, the proposed amendment to the restated Declaration of Protective Covenants adds a new section 9.6 requiring all property owners to grant property access easement uh, to the association for inspection. Why was this uh, new requirement uh, necessary, and and uh, you know, if it if it is actually a new requirement? Uh, it's actually not a new requirement. It's really a clarification. We consider this a housekeeping amendment, and we put it in there just to eliminate the confusion. The state law requires that homeowners association conduct inspections of properties for a property resale disclosure. This is only part possible by entering the ground and observing the exterior four sides. Covenant enforcements may be required for an exterior inspection. Also, our ARC handbook permits access to the property for all new constructions and modifications. And we just wanted to make sure it is clearly stated in our uh, protected covenants. Uh, similarly, uh, a proposed amendment Add section uh, 11.6 requiring property owners to pay all legal costs incurred by association by an associated uh, violation for any dispute, uh, regardless of merit or out outcome. How is this acceptable? Again, the proposed statement does not say regardless of merit or outcome. It states that regardless of whether the association pursues the matter in court. Um, in the past, the FCHOA has gained resolution of some of the covenants violations without any prior court judgment happening. However, the FCHOA did incur court filing costs and attorney expenses. The FCHOA already has authority to collect legal expenses and court costs for violations such as financial delinquencies. Once in court, legal expenses are at the discretion of the court. This article helps in potential violations are on notice that the legal expenses may be collected. Just being upfront and uh, open with our, our members here. The membership as a whole should not expect to pay legal expenses to resolve covenant violations for one individual. Thank you. Uh, this question uh, is in regards to what if we do not get to the 66 and two thirds percent of the property owners uh, to initially return their votes in time, uh, what is the plan for the board of directors to hold over uh, the 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 election, including how how, how are we going to go about that process, and uh, how would how long would you anticipate that process to take? Okay, what what will happen is if we do not have uh, the two thirds for the uh, protective covenants or the fifty one percent for the bylaws. We'll pass a resolution to um, extend the period of time that we can vote on that. And we will set up um, a committee, a group, a task force, and get block captains that will go um, uh, cul-de-sac by cul-de-sac, area by area. Um, we can, from our uh, voting uh, system, Qualtrics, identify names of people who were not able to vote during the voting period. And we can specifically go uh, to see them with a ballot in our hands and ask them to please vote at that time. And that's what we will do. And just to clarify on that, this was what had happened back in 2013 when we last updated these uh, declarations and bylaws. And uh, we did not get the required number at the time. So the board of directors passed a resolution to extend the voting period for that particular vote only. We will close the voting on the first issues at the at the voting cutoff period and the election of our new board of directors. Uh, 
but we will extend it for these uh, two already uh, three items uh, if necessary if, if necessary. necessary yeah and it is if necessary so I would tell everybody vote vote vote, vote. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this question is about you know the, the the structure of the capital contribution fee I think there may be a little bit of confusion when we talked about the rollover resolution of the operating account so this question goes to what you know will revenue generated by the capital contribution fee be carried over from year to year uh and remain earmarked for capital projects and so i think just clarification that this is not part of our operating uh revenue that gets rolled over each year this is going to a uh a capital uh, fund which remains in, in place until it's used. As Drew correctly said, this is going to a capital fund, reserve fund that is in place and until used. And this was allowed by state law and uh, good common practices to have that. The only monies that have to be rolled over are the year-to-year -year operating the expenses and only the operating expenses those are the things that pay the wages and salaries of our employees that go out there and do all the work and maintenance uh, that makes this place look really great every year simple answer yes <laughs> uh, th this question is uh, perhaps i'm trying to think of the best way to word this question is you know what if the reason for the lack of the voting or voting against negative votes is because the residents uh want it altered um so uh if we don't achieve our 66 and two-thirds we never achieve it you know what happens and uh how would that how would that um uh, you know effort to uh, amend amend it move forward after that okay i'd, I'd like to mention that you know um when we first started this, I was a proponent to include amenities under this um, capital contribution fee. I was one of the people who wanted that done. But I recognized that the capital contribution fee is an important part of new revenue for our community. And you have to learn to compromise, it's, it was my feeling. And I am willing to compromise that we are not including amenities and we're not including um, the capital investment fund is not going to be funded through this. It will be done separately. But it's important that we have this, a new source of revenue. Uh, I, I, you know, the other thing is if we find some sugar daddy who wants to fund this for some years, uh, that would make life a whole lot better. But if not, it's coming out. It shouldn't be being fresh exactly. But it will come directly out of your assessments. Either we get it through capital contribution fee or you will pay them through your assessments. And this is an opportunity to have new people who come in, as Roy always says, new people come in to um, put something into the fund. They're getting the benefit of all the um, amenities, uh, not amenities, of all the uh, capital projects, the roads, the buildings, the um, how we keep the place up. They get the benefit of all that. Now they're putting a little contribution in um, to get themselves started. Okay, that covers the specific resolution on the capital contribution fee. On the resolutions for uh, changing the bylaws and updating the declarations, um, if those for some reason wasn't accepted by the, uh, the vote, and you know, when we get mm -hmm. enough votes in and we can determine an outcome from it, um, we can basically operate under our current declarations and our current bylaws. We would prefer to operate under the revisions because it's much clearer and it's much easier for an outsider to understand what we're trying to do having all these revisions put in it so if there's some issue that comes up in a court case it's easier for a judge to look at the, our bylaws and our declarations and make a determination on the on the merits of the case and so we think it's it's really important that our residents understand that and they, they go ahead and approve the changes to the declarations and the changes to the bylaws, excluding capital contribution fee, which Nan, which Sally talked about and, and that and what we'd, how we'd handle that one. And I should also point out that a number of these changes that we're making 
are required by law. That is, we've already been doing those changes. We have to, if the, if the state or the county laws change, we have to react to them. Just because we don't get them in our documents doesn't mean that we, we um, you know, can, can pass them over. So what we're doing is trying to bring our documents in some, many instances up to the level where they should be that represent what it is is that is happening in Ford's colony. I'm going to add kind of the flip side. <laughs> is that if we cannot get the votes that we need to either pass the changes to the documents, okay, or said differently is that there are a number of negative votes so the Senate does not pass, okay, is that we will probably do an analysis as to why it did not pass because as Sally and uh, uh, as we're saying is that, you know, some of these things really do need to be incorporated in our documents. So we'll probably have to go to the well again to try to get some of these changes passed. Yes. Well, this question kind of reflects back to the amount that is proposed in the article, which is one half of the annual assessment. The comment is uh, achieving revenues of 150 to 200 thousand dollars a year is uh, is not much in uh, for uh, capital project related expenses. So um, we certainly, you, perhaps you could you just clarify, Sally, that this is only 10 to perhaps 20 percent of what our total spending is year to year in uh, in capital replacement and. Mm -hmm. uh, and how we fund the 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 other million dollars in that each year in capital replacement. Okay. Our our current year uh, capital uh, fund is a uh, replacement fund is about a million three out of our total budget of six million nine. So that's the capital portion of the budget, and that's the amount to which the capital contribution fee will be applied. So it would be reducing a million three to approximately a million one. Now that's this year's budget. Each year the budget's different, um, but this year's budget it's one three. And had we had this in place, it would have been a mil closer to a million one. That's a decent amount of money that would be a reduction and would be savings to our um, residents. Um, I know there are some places besides here, other people have said that what houses in Florida and in other places, and they're considerably higher capital contribution fee. And in addition, other people have said that's a lot of money. Um, I think it should be less. So we've tried to find a point where we think it would be a value to our community. We'll bring in enough money to have a value to it um, and get not make our homes um, less interesting to future buyers, future purchasers. We have uh, just some general budget comments slash questionings. Um, how has the FCHOA tightened its, tighten its belt or how has it tightened its belt perhaps in uh, uh, for budget 21 and budget fiscal year 22 and uh, regarding these uh, fiscally difficult times? Well, I can give you a couple examples. Um, one is, as we were talking about operating projects a little bit uh, before, for example, um, each year roads and project maintenance and generally facilities come up with some projects um, under twenty, thirty thousand dollars, or maybe forty, fifty in total from all, both sites of things that need to be done. For example, there's been uh, there's a shed around here. They need an additional shed um, to store. Uh, some of the swim club things and some of the maintenance things over at Westbury uh, Pool. They need some racking. We need some racking in some other places. None of these were critical. We did not put aside any kind of critical project, but we put these projects off to a future year as opposed to putting them in this year because we had um, major increases due to labor rates. Um, everybody is well aware of labor rates out in the uh, marketplace and that they have gone up significantly. Uh, and we felt we have felt the brunt of that, um, losing good people and trying to hire new ones uh, at our current rates just don't work. So um, at any rate, uh, we did set aside several operating projects that way. Um, we also looked at for this past year in our uh, 
uh, capital reserve budget. We had a number of vehicles we were going to purchase. But when it came down to it, when we went out in the marketplace, we couldn't get what we wanted and we couldn't. And those things that we could find were um, more expensive than we wanted to pay, uh, than we had set aside for. And we feel that perhaps in the future, the next year or shortly thereafter, the, the prices may become more reasonable and product supply may be more reasonable. So we put that off. All the vehicles were old enough to be replaced and are not going to last another five years. But we did not put anything, put ourselves in any danger from continuing to use them for another three to six or seven months. So there are a variety of things like that um, in, that we set aside, didn't spend the money on, or will not spend the money on in 2022. Okay, another uh, taking advantage of uh, the opportunity to ask general budget questions. Uh, the FCHOA dues do not include. Uh, trash pickup or leaf removal and, uh, and basically it's a suggestion that the the board should consider that um, well in the past um, in the past they've looked into it the problem is what would happen is a company would therefore say Ford's home Ford's County Homeowners Association, okay, we'll give you this rate. You guarantee that we get this amount of money every every month on the state. So we would become the person, the, the group that would have to collect the um, money for the garbage and collect the money for the leaf removal. We would have to go after our people who decide they didn't want to use the service that we decided they should use and they wanted to use some other service. All of a sudden, we don't have their in, in uh, their revenue coming in. People sell their house or it stays un, um, uninhabited for a while. We don't have that revenue. We, we don't really want to get into uh, the situation where we're trying to handle um, being responsible for paying for leaf removal and responsible for the paying of garbage. Uh, it, it's just not a, a smart thing for us to do. If I may, I, we'd also have to, the, the, the board would actually be deciding on behalf of the community. We have about... Uh, just using general numbers, maybe 40% of the community has their trash picked up once a week on Thursdays. Another 40% of the community has their trash picked up uh, on one day of the week on Friday. About 20% of the community uh, is using one of two other services that are picking up uh, twice a week. One actually picks up around the side of the house. So there's all sorts of services now in place that we'd be deciding for the entire whole how everybody was going to have their uh, trash service picked up. Uh, so that that's been some of the discussions with in prior board uh, conversations. Um, trying to look for more uh, capital contribution fee questions. I'm not really uh, seeing those. A couple uh, suggestions to review different articles and uh, for uh, and we'll and we will do that. Um, one question, another. Uh, Question about capital improvements. Does the FCHOA adopt and publish annually a capital improvement plan? Uh, and does it seek general membership approv approval on an annual basis for capital improvements, well, which I'll, I'll interpret as new amenities uh, type of construction? Uh, how, do we, how do we deal with that in our budget, budget process? I guess it's a more general question. Mm -hmm. The board of directors is charged with producing a budget and setting the assessments. And capital improvements, uh, amenities are under the role of being paid for by assessments. Therefore, the board makes the decision with the help of the committees and with the help of um, a number of uh, surveys that go out to ask people what they're interested in. Um, we don't do this in a void. And, but the bottom line responsibility is the board's to, to devise a budget, yearly budget, to include capital, um, operating projects, new amenities, uh, Ford's Colony Drive, paying the mortgage, et cetera. Just to add to that on the section of new amenities, we asked our facilities committee to develop a plan based on the results of our annual surveys on 
how they would have no amenities to Fort Scully. Uh, as a specific example, part of that plan came up several years ago and recommended we added the water slide at Westbury Park, and we the board approved that and uh, also provided funding in the capital investment fund to accomplish that uh, as part of the budget process several years ago and it was done. Uh, there are other amenities that are on that list that are under study. There are other amenities that are being thought about and considered and starting some initial assessments on to see you know, what kind of response of people would like to have that particular amenity uh, and how would they like to, to use it. So there's a, we do depend on our committees a lot to advise the board on what's the smart thing to do and when the smart thing to do it is. And then in the budgeting process, we figure out when we can afford to do it. And Sally mentioned it, but I, I will reiterate it is that the use of the survey is very, very important because that is also a tool that's used that collects a lot of input from residents. This year, there were 1,500 residents that responded to that survey with 2,700 comments that was included in that survey. That's a wealth of information for the board to use to help understand what the basic constituencies within the community would like to see. I uh, I don't have any uh, additional questions to, uh, for the task force. If uh, Sal, if you'd like to like make a closing remark, or Roy. Sure. Sure, I, I really don't have too much to say other than I thank you all for coming out tonight. I hope we've answered your questions. If anything comes to your mind that you have additional questions, please um, uh, email us at the board. You can find our email addresses on the front cover of the Talk of the Colony. This is an, these are important resolutions that need to be passed. Um, this is the time to do it. Um, it is something that is vital to the community to keep us viable, keep us um, providing, uh, providing services to make our community the best one in the area. So I thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, I thank you for asking questions. Uh, have a good evening and- uh, Go out to vote, please yes, vote. Vote, vote. Yes, please vote and please vote. Yes, agreed. Agreed is the new word. Thank uh, you comment here thank you so much for for your tireless efforts and hard work thank you for all you do just a lot of very generous coming comments coming in now uh so we wish everybody good night thank you for participating and uh, and again please uh please vote and talk to your neighbors so we can get our required number of votes thank you very much good night <laughs>